Hey everybody, welcome back. It's been a while since I made a video. There's been a lot of changes in my life going on and all for the good. Uh, making progress on the dragster. Got the whole El Camino painted and running and we went to LS Fest and it ran personal best way faster than I even planned on going with it. Too fast for the class or for the index that we were trying to run. Had a blast with it. Didn't film any of it. We were just having fun. So I promise to make that a priority this year. The El Camino, we have a lot of fun with, and I want to show it to you guys. So uh, that'll be another video, another series. Uh, made some changes to the Dragster engine. I'll show that to you guys in another video. The last video I think you guys saw of the engine, it had a completely different intake and cold side and everything, 16 injectors and all that. I changed that completely up. It is going to be a lot easier to run the way I'm doing it now. So that'll be a different video. Uh, meanwhile, you can see I'm building the body for the dragster and I had to build a few tools to build the body and I'm not a sheet metal guy by any means, but it's coming out like I'm, I'm super stoked with it. So I promised some guys I'd make a video. I posted it on Facebook, uh, um, and got some really positive feedback on these tools. So this video is going to be about the tools and a little bit about the body. And here we go. So first thing, the bead roller, I was planning on hand cranking this thing and holy cow, my dad came through. He ordered this Woodward Fab motor for it and he had to modify a few things on it to make it fit this, this bead roller, but wow, that is awesome. Huge shout out to my dad for that. Could not imagine doing this with, without that. You could do it with a hand crank. It would take one guy cranking and one guy feeding. There's no way you could do these panels, uh, especially the bigger ones down by the driver compartment. There's no way one guy could do them. With this, one guy can do them. So while he was mounting that, I made this fence for it because I'll show you on the body, I wanted straight lines. And I've never used one of these before, a bead roller before. So we played with it a little bit and kind of figured it out. This uh, 16th step die is a little bit bigger than what I need, but I could have turned them in a lathe to get them a little closer, but it actually works fine for what we're doing. The fence, you can buy these for like 50 bucks from Eastwood, a couple different places on eBay or whatever, but I figured we had all kinds of scrap here. So while he was doing that, I did this just bandsaw and a MIG welder is all you need. What I did was this piece here is just a flat, uh, I think two inch by three sixteenths. And then that's what this is too. Use magnetic angles, got it at a 90, train going by. Hang on just a second, okay. Got it at a 90. This piece and that piece were one continuous piece. Welded this side and that side to it, left the middle unwelded. Got it done, and I took a porta band, put it in a vise, and used a porta band, and I sliced it and sliced it, took the center out. So if you look down it, if I can get the camera to focus right there, it's straight down it. Precision, redneck precision. Um, the clamp here, two bolts, better than one. Gusseted it a little bit. It's uh, gusseted on the back side. Uh, you can see it's welded inside that, and so. What I did was my, uh, my side panels, well, I'll just show those to you real quick. All my side panels have an overlap, inch and a half. So seams are, they just kind of melt away going down the car. Whenever you walk this way, you can see them. So Zeus's are uh, countersunk too. I like that. Smooth. Smooth as fast. So anyways, set this fence at an inch and a half from the center of that die, and you get an inch and a half uh, overlap on your steps. And then my top panels will sit over these, so I step rolled these in, if you can see it, they're step rolled in, and I wanted those two and a half inches from the top. I'm gonna mount Zeus's in the panel itself 
and the top piece will zeus into this panel not to the chassis so this entire body is going to be mounted off the lower frame rail and it'll float on top of that and this is a it's it's important this is a slip tube chassis so it's going to be you know it's going to deflect a little bit and move around and everything like that but it's it's going to work i'm sure it's going to work so i made a couple of reference lines uh that's my inch and a half line and then it's set at two and a half right now uh so it's real easy when i was making panels i could switch back and forth kind of crude but it works and uh we don't have i mean my dad's got more money in that than i've got in any of this so uh like i said huge huge deal that was a big surprise so coming over to this is what everybody wanted to see this is the radius break this was built very crudely for one purpose only to bend these arrow this is a piece that i messed up so i'm gonna i'm actually gonna show you guys how this works i just rough cut that again so i could bend that for you guys but uh there's an arrow lip that starts at the nose and goes all the way down the car and each panel has the same bend in it and then when you get to the top we're going to have a roll here and then a spine and then another roll there and they're all going to be built, bent on the same radius you can see this old car it's covered in dust but you can see the roll the spine and the other roll uh my new my new body is going to be a lot taller. You can see how much taller that nose is. So it's going to stand up high all the way across up to the windshield. I like that. Um, I like that look better. So that's what we're going to do. Anyway, back to this. Like I said, purpose built for this body only. If I wanted to make this interchangeable, I would have made these arms completely separate so that the dies could be interchanged for different sizes. There is uh Mittler brothers has one on the market. That's like 16 or 1700 bucks hobby break. That's four foot wide. It would have worked, but it's $1,600, $1,700, whatever. I've got, <clears throat> I don't know, 250, 300 bucks in this. That was building it twice. I actually originally built it with a inch and five eighths uh bar up there and i didn't like that big of a radius i wanted a smaller so i settled on an inch and an eighth and i was able to dual purpose that and use that to brace that this takes a tremendous amount of bracing to keep that bar from deflecting as you're trying to you know manipulate aluminum around it 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 needs to stay perfectly straight so that the aluminum adheres right to it or conforms right to it so how i achieved this to be in an inch and an eighth is actually a piece of chromoly tubing that we use on the dragsters. It's just inch and an eighth, 058 wall, 4130 chromoly. Inside of it is a piece of one inch, 250 wall, 4130 chromoly that local airplane place had. You can order this stuff online. Things are getting stupid priced right now, but everything that I got here, like these bearings came from eBay. Uh, super cheap, easy to use. They're plenty strong. Posted pictures of this when I first built this and people freaked out because I TIG welded to the bearing. And <laughs> I was real careful. I mean, you can see where it heated it, but I was real careful to keep it right on the race, keep heat down, did a couple dabs at a time. Uh, went through it real fast. It's, it's nothing special, but this thing isn't, you know, on a car going down the road, it's going 180 degrees at a time. And that's going to do that. It's whole life. It's perfectly fine. Plenty strong inside that 250 wall. One inch is, uh, I don't even remember what size these were. They were shims. So that'd be a, a half inch. Uh, I, it, it got down to, um, where I just wanted to fill that and be solid. And I had some spare pieces and a solid rod. I just, that's solid all the way across. Wanted it as strong as possible. Like I said, if I was gonna make it interchangeable, I wouldn't have welded the arms right to it, but I just wanted it to build this body and it works perfect. So off the back of that, these are two inch by 3 16 plates there, there. And then this is the, the original uh inch and five eighths 250 wall dom i shimmed everything and got it perfectly straight and welded it so this bar 
doesn't have very much deflection at all on it and it doesn't move it it works perfect for the lower roller um oh these bearings are inch and an eighth id and then they slide over the inch and an eighth od chromoly uh, there it's it's a press fit but it goes on with a, a socket and a hammer no problem for the roller what I did is that's a piece of two inch 250 wall DOM that I got from a local welding shop here in town and what I did well I, I cut this here so you can see this this was a this was a piece of the two inch 250 wall and then this is a piece of inch and a half DOM, and it's actually 3 16 wall. And what that does is it ends up with an inch and an eighth ID that an inch and an eighth OD bearing fits in. Now, this doesn't fit right inside that because they're both inch and a half and they're pretty, they're stout. So that's a complete interference fit. So what I did was inside that tube, which is what this would be, I honed this to fit and I put, I cut a couple of sleeves like this, put them in the freezer, and then honed this to fit, heated it with a torch, brought these out of the freezer, dropped them right in. It, it, it fit perfect. So that's what we ended up with. And then if you look in there, you can see that bearing just snaps right in there. It's got a little snap ring in that holds it from, keep it from falling. And then this is just a piece of, this is a, a inch, half inch, all thread um, bolt, <laughs> sorry, mine's freezing here. Got a nut that fits inside there. That bolt goes through the nut. I put it in with a wrench and then tighten it back to this quarter inch sleeve. So that the end of that bolt's just sticking through there riding on that bearing and that can't go anywhere because I did the same thing on this end. So it's just got it captured. So I could take that out and take that roller out if I ever wanted to change it. The handle is just a piece of one inch, like 065 wall chromoly. And I just used a step bit and open that up to one inch so it fits in there nice. It doesn't need to be on a bearing. It just needs to turn a little bit whenever you crank on it with your hand. Uh, I, I TIG welded this all together. It's, it's, I just, it's important to me. I mean, you could build this with a MIG welder, but I just didn't want the splatter on all this stuff. It, it makes it a lot nicer if you TIG weld it. So this bar here and this is just, these are just pieces. And actually the, the mount arms are just pieces of a uh, pretty thin wall, inch by inch and a half, you know, tube that we found at a uh, steel place down in St. Louis, like six or seven years, maybe even longer than that. My dad found, uh, we found a ton of it and bought a bunch of it and we use it for everything here. We bought it super cheap and it works great for little handles and things like that and brackets. So let me show you the way this works. If you notice, I've got a pretty good gap there. I, I thought that you really needed to have this pretty tight and I originally built it with like just over 50 thousandths clearance because I'm using 40 thousandths thick aluminum. And I thought, well, I might want to use 50 thousandths one day on something or, or on a piece or, or whatever. That did not work. And I'll tell you why. You can see where these steps are. Well, if this bent is bent over a piece of inch and an eighth bar, and you bend that first, and then you try to bead roll that step in it, well, these are like two inch wheels. So as that's coming through and it hits that little tight radius, it just mangles it. So that wasn't gonna work. So I thought, well, let me try to step roll it first and then bend it, and it worked. But I had to open that gap up because now you're, you're 40 thousandths and then you're a 16th step on top of that. So. If you look at that from the end, well, this one's not, this one's kind of mangled because I cut it. If you look over here at one of these, you can see that that's a pretty thick step. So that whole thing's got to fit through that roller. So I, I loosened up that gap 
And had I made this adjustable originally, I would have had these water jetted and had them slotted. But I just opened, you can see the little gap there. I just opened the holes up and slid it down. And that kind of opened me up to having it misaligned that way and that way. And, you know, 360 degrees, either way, it could have been misaligned. But basically, if you flip this up, put it against the die, you can align it, wedge shims in there, and then tighten it back up. It's literally just tight. I didn't weld those nuts on there or anything. It's just, it's tight and pinched. No washers, just nuts and bolts right there. And it holds. So I bent all those panels on it and it hasn't moved a bit. So you just bring this through, slide that in there. And then wherever you want your roll, you know, we'll do a big one here, right there. These are all like an inch and a half out. Um, out from the edge of this bar, the, the front edge of this bar. You can, if you, if you were going to build one of these, I would recommend building it a little nicer than this with a, with a degree wheel or something like that. When I go to bend these, I basically bend them. I mean, you have some spring back, so you got to go past 90. You know, you want a 90 degree flip out for your radius on your uh, arrow lip. You got to go a little past 90, you got spring back. You have to tweak them a little bit. If you can see, I've got them all really close. I mean, it, it lines up, makes a pretty good line all the way down the car. I did each one of those one at a time. Those panels are only 35 and a half inches long. So each one has to be pretty close to the other. I did all those by hand with no stop. Now, when I go to build the cap pieces, they're going to be precision because they have to make a straight line all the way up either side and then the, then the spine has to be all the way up. So I'm going to have to come up with some sort of incremental stop so that everyone is bent the same way or else this thing's going to go to crap real fast. But I'll show you this. It takes one hand to bend this. It's pretty easy. It's amazing how strong that has to be to keep it from going, but... With that rolling and that big of a of a radius roller follower roll, it it just bends right up. So I'll put like a 45 on that. And that was too much to take it out that way. But you can see it just does a phenomenal job. Straight all the way across. This still has the plastic on it, but it's, I could not be happier with the way this thing turned out. It's four feet wide, but because the arms are here, uh, 45 inches is the maximum piece I can bend to fit between the arms. I originally, well, when I first built this with the bigger radius, it was back further, and that's what these stops were welded on the table, and that's what those were. And when I put the smaller bar on and the bigger follower, I had to move it out from the table more so that the follower dropped all the way down. It was hitting the table and, and keeping it kind of up like that. So now it's completely out of the way, swings down there completely out of the way. I could not be happier with it. Like I said, the only thing I want to do is change the, the stops uh, or add the stops so that it, it works the way I want it to work. Over here, I made a super crude, just a regular straight sheet metal brake. I need to finish this. I need to actually build a bridge and be able to put pressure on the center of this. But good in this aluminum, it works perfect. And I only had two bends. I'll show them to you that I had to do with this. I built this uh, before I built that a couple years ago. And I did this all with a MIG welder. And these are just regular steel collars. And you notch that out. For the collars this piece is welded to the table two of these collars are welded to this two of them are welded to that the bolt goes through as a hinge and i stiffened this with just a square tube and then you can see where that is another that's basically a piece of angle that's welded to the table that holds that and then these i've got them tightened down but they're on springs and so you can loosen those up, slide your piece down, tighten it down. It bends 90 to 90 degree bends and it, 
for being crude and making it just in a couple hours, I've used it a ton of times and it works great. Um, for this, I only needed it for two bins and it's these bins right up at the top of these panels. So you can see where they come up and turn in tight, nice to the cage. I couldn't be happier with it. Uh, you can tell a little bit, you can see where it's kind of crisp there and crisp there and kind of dies in the middle. It's per perfectly fine. This, this whole body is going to be vinyl wrapped. I have a plan to vinyl wrap it and uh, I think it's going to be really cool. So there's going to be straight panels here. They're going to be built out of 050. So I am going to have to bend a, a, the same radius out of 050. I wanted those a little bit stronger because that's a big straight panel. And then these panels will actually be Zeus straight to the ch chassis just to cover that up. But that is about it. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. I super appreciate everybody's positive feedback. This is a dream car of mine, and I could not be happier with how it's coming out. Uh, oh, the seat that's in it. I don't think I'm going to leave that in there. I think I'm going to build a seat. That was a Kirky seat that I had that didn't fit a customer car, and I decided to cut it up and notch it, weld it together, and try to make it fit in there, and it actually fits, but... I really want a full containment seat with all the way around. Uh, it, it works perfect for just mocking up though. And maybe I'll make a cool bomber seat out of it or something like that. So somebody in a rat rod, I don't know. Anyway, it's getting late. Appreciate it. You guys uh, leave a like, subscribe, comments, anything, any questions you have, just let me know. Thank you.